and welcome back to my channel. My name's Yasmin and I'm a hand applique designer and maker. I design and create hand applique patterns and tutorials for those that want to learn the beautiful traditional technique of needle turn hand applique. And this is my space on YouTube to talk about my life as a designer, um, show you behind the scenes, uh, projects that I'm working on, as well as lots of other crafty projects I'm working on, such as knitting, cross stitch, embroidery, anything that's making me happy and that I think you'll enjoy watching me make. <laughs> um, so again we're here for another sit down vlog podcast i don't really know what to call it i i probably call certain things the wrong thing all the time but um i'm just gonna go with it because um i think if i keep trying to record things every time i make a mistake i'll get nowhere so um yeah anyway so um i'm gonna talk today a little bit about my current hand applique projects i'm working on and show you the progress I've made on my knitted blanket that is in the style of a quilt. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll show you that at the end. Um, so the last time I think I was on here, I was talking about going to do a workshop at a quilters guild. And <laughs> I've been a bit, I was a bit of a numpty. So I was in contact with a lady organising the event, um, finding out a bit more information about when it would be, when I was going to be doing my workshop, etc. And I hadn't heard anything from her for a while in terms of the details. And I thought, I thought, oh, I need to, you know, message her and find out exactly um, what they'll provide. So things like tables and space to do my workshop. And <laughs> I replied, I, I emailed her and I said, um, oh, I just wondered you know, what time you'll be there and, you know, is there a table for me to set up all my stuff on? And um, she told me that the event is for 2023, not 2022. <laughs> so I'd completely, and, and the stupid thing was, I went back to the original email that she sent me and she had put 2023, but for some reason I completely ignored that very vital detail. So I'd been getting myself all ready for this workshop um, getting all my samples ready and everything for, for um, my presentation I was doing. Um, so yeah, I felt like a bit of an idiot and I had to laugh at my husband because I thought if I'd just gone along um, and rocked up at the the, sh the quilt shop where it was going to be held, they probably would have just looked at me blankly saying, um, not sure why you're here. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so that was a bit of an interesting um, lead up to that event I thought I was doing. But the nice thing is I've got something to look forward to for next year now. So um, yeah, I'll just have to make sure that I put it in my diary and um, actually get it re get ready for the event when it's meant to happen. So, but anyway, you know, you make mistakes. But um, I uh, I think when I did my last um, vlog podcast sit down chat, I'm going to call it sit down chat because otherwise that I'll get confused with what I meant to call it. I was working on a sample to do in the workshop so this was a pattern that I designed for a quilt museum last October that I decided to increase the size of to make a cushion cover so I actually finished the sample and um, this is it here and as you can see everything's stitched down I gave it a nice iron this morning so it looks nice and neat at the moment but um but yeah, I'm still going to carry on making it into a cushion and I found a really nice um, thread that I'm going to use. Um, oh, it's there, I think. I was going to... Let me just grab it. So I think I mentioned I was going to use a green thread to do a bit of hand quilting around it. And I found this Aurifil 20... Is it 28? Yeah, 20, the, the 28 weight in this really nice green colour. And I think it works really nicely with the with with the colours in here. I think. I mean, when I actually do the hand quilting of it, I don't think it's going to show up too much. It's going to be quite subtle. So, as long as it it blends in nicely, I think. Like I said before, I want to have the three shades of green to complement um, the more the more colourful flowers in this piece. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get that all ready to hand quilt. And that would be quite a nice small project to work on. I love hand quilting. I wouldn't say I'm amazing at it. You know, I've I, I've got the um, the rocking technique and I use a leather thimble as well. So it does take a while to get into it. And sometimes you look at the stitches and they're kind of a bit skew with, but you just have to go with it. And um, it is all about practice. And it's, it's like doing needle turn hand applique. You do feel all fingers and thumbs to begin with. But I think the more you do it, the more you 
train your hands to work in a certain rhythm and it just becomes second nature and that's when it's that, that key moment when it starts to become really, really relaxing and therapeutic. So really looking forward to working on this little sample and I think because it's quite a small, well I say small cushion, um, small project compared to a full size quilt, it should, um, I should be able to do it fairly, fairly, fairly quickly. And I use that word lightly because I don't like to rush things too much, but it will, it will feel like a satisfying finish if I can get that hand quilted and then I can have it on display in my home. So that was that. Was that. At least I've got a nice um, cushion cover to work on. <laughs> and um, I might, you know, this time next year I might do a different sample for my workshop, but it works really nicely with all the shapes in that one to teach people how to do the technique. So we'll see. We'll see what happens next year. <laughs> but um, yeah. And then the other thing that I have been working on is my Storyland of the Star So Along. So that's ticking away nicely. And I just released this, well, this block's coming up tomorrow. I think I showed it to you last time it hadn't been stitched down. So I've actually stitched it all down now, as you can see. And I'm really pleased with the uh, fabric placement in the center. I don't know if I'm gonna do that upside down, but um, yeah, I didn't, I picked up the first green square and that was happened to be the first one I needed to stitch down so I thought it's meant to be and it just looks really pretty in the centre. It really draws your eye into the centre of the block as well and makes you sort of look around the block at the different patterns of the fabric. But um, yeah, because I've done that block I am starting to put together the rows. So these rows, these blocks are 12 and a half inches square and when they're finished they'll be 12 inches so the um, it's an, a nine block, there are nine blocks in the whole mini quilt so it's actually a really nice size to work on but I've actually decided to hand piece the blocks together because I just thought, I think I might, I, I might have mentioned this before, I do apologise if I have and I'm repeating myself. Um, I really like the idea of hand piecing them together rather than using the machine and just creating a completely handmade quilt and I as you can see I, I did I put these three blocks together and it actually really comes together really quickly the hand piecing um, again I used a I think I used a 28 weight Aurifil white thread because I like I like the thickness of it I like the thickness of working with it and it stitches up beautifully and I'm always paranoid that things are going to come undone, so I try and when I'm knotting things off on the back, I do two knots rather than one, um, and I just always want to make sure everything's secure so that if it goes in the wash or has a quite heavy wear and tear on it, it's not going to just start falling apart, which it never will because threads are extremely strong, stronger than I always think they are. Um, but yeah, it's looking really nicely actually, looking nicely, looking nice. <laughs> Um, I'm really pleased with how it looks so this this is actually goes this way around so this is the top going to be the top row and then you can it goes down like that this is hard to show it on let me do it this way and then you can see the blocks in all their glory so yeah I'm pleased with it it's, it's um it's actually a really nice size mini quilt to work on um, it's got me thinking about doing another mini quilt of this size, so having nine blocks. And I was thinking, I don't, a few uh, vlogs or sit down chats um, before, I showed you a mini, mini, like a really mini quilt that I had done for the festival quilts. Um, let me see if I can go and find it actually, because it'll make more sense when I'm talking about it. One minute. So this is the teeny tiny mini quilt I was talking about. So this is all hand embroidered. Um, I've talked about this before, I don't wanna bang on about it again. Um, but yeah, all of these are traditional hand applique blocks, but they've all been hand hand embroidered using Aurifil threads. But as you can see, it's a nine, nine, nine blocks in in this kind of mini, mini, mini squilt, mini quilt. <laughs> Um, with a board around the edge and I just I thought because I've enjoyed working on this smaller size quilt I thought it might be quite fun to create another create these blocks but the full size so 12 inch blocks to to supersize this 
pattern. I don't know. I have actually I have actually made the the central central block. I've put I've created the template for it. I did it the other day. I just had a fancy to play around on um, Illustrator with that one, and um, I might need to do a test block to see if it if it works and if it looks good. But it might be quite a nice um, mini quilt to have as an option for people because I think um, I, I'm getting the sense that a lot of people want to work on slightly smaller projects rather than a massive quilt or a massive um, well yeah a massive quilt um, people are looking to work on slightly smaller projects so that they feel they can achieve more I don't know do you feel I don't know whether you feel like that if you if you do quilting or projects um, yeah it's quite there's a lot there is a lot of options out there and I think sometimes it can be quite overwhelming and I find as a make as a, a maker you know putting my business um side you know setting that apart I do feel I feel quite overwhelmed some, sometimes with all the options of things you can make and do and it's exciting but it's also you kind of think oh my god where do I start and I really want to do this and this and this and I don't have time to do everything um so I think it's it's just about finding for me as a designer finding ways to create projects that makes it achievable for people to finish so if it means providing different options to use a block for so for example the sample that I did for my workshop that was a 12 inch block and then I provided details of how to make that into a cushion in my newsletter and you still get the the joy of making something but you don't feel too overwhelmed by making a big thing I hope that makes sense I don't know whether I've just rambled the last two three minutes but um yeah so m maybe that will happen in the new year I don't know again it depends whether I have time because um, I'm working on my 2023 block of the month at the moment and I'm almost, I think I'm almost there with the design. I think I finalised the, the designs for each of the blocks and sections and now it's just a case of fi fine tuning the patterns and the designs within those blocks and tidying them up and and then thinking about a colour scheme for the whole quilt. So yeah, I, I share um, a bit more information about what I'm doing with a block a month in my newsletter. So, so I share pictures and different things and that. So if it's something you're interested in, then it'd be great to have you on my newsletter. And I share lots of other things on there as well. So yeah, um, next 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 I feel like I should be more organized with this I know a lot of people that do this write lists of things they want to talk about whereas I just have a pile of things and I kind of just <laughs> work through them as as I'm as I'm talking so I hope you enjoy what I do I, I feel like I ramble quite a lot which I don't know whether it's very um professional but I'll get used to it <laughs> um my one of the things I started a while ago is recreating an antique hand applique quilt pattern and I've got a separate series on my YouTube channel which I'm going to be filming more of in the next few weeks and I have just finished the second block um, which didn't take as long as the first block and I've also finished the first block so I'll show you the first block so I just to give you a bit of context here <laughs> I started I wrote the date of when I started this block oh. excuse me um, our dog has epilepsy and he has to have tablets at certain times of the day so that was his two o'clock um, tablet so um, I'll just quickly go and give him his tablet and then I'll be back Okay, so I'm back now. Um, so I, yeah, what was I, what was I talking about? So yeah, so I started this block on the 30th of September last year, and I would say I finished it yesterday. <laughs> so this is the first block of the quilt, and I am completely in love with it. It's just, it's turned out so beautifully. Excuse me, the, the weird way I'm holding it, but it's a 21 inch square block, so it's quite big. <laughs> um, but it is, it's, oh, it's everything I imagined it to be in real life. And it's, I don't know whether you'll be able to see. So this pink fabric's got red flowers in it, which pick up the red in that. Um, 
and I've, I've starched it very lightly. Um, although I say starched, I don't know whether it's actually starch. It's this soap, is it soak? Yeah, it's by a company called Soak and it's the flatter, um, it's a, well it's actually not starch, it's starch free smoothing spray. And this is, it's called Celebration, this smell. And oh, it just smells gorgeous. But I just, I spray a little bit of that on the front of the block and I just let it dry for a little bit. And then I, I, I iron the block from the back. So it, it just helps smooth out all the applique shapes and it makes it smell beautiful as well. So it smells gorgeous. And thankfully, the, I mean, the camera's picking up all the detail of it, but hopefully, Thankfully, it's not picking up too much detail because there's quite a lot of um, of dog hair on <laughs> on here and cat hair from when we had our lovely, our gorgeous boy Patch who passed away last Christmas. Um, so I need to get the roller on that. But um, but yeah, it's oh, it, I'm really pleased with it, and it's it's given me um, made me feel excited about carrying on with this project. Um, so that's the first block and. I just finished the second block. I also finished that yesterday, so I did both of them at the same time. So this is the second block. So this is a traditional pineapple style block. And um, yeah, this was a really quick one. As you can see, it's quite a simple, simple shape. So it was a really quick one to put together. And the, the most, um, the, for me, the time consuming thing is actually pre prepping your block. Um, the actual, actual stitching doesn't feel like it takes that long. It's just cutting out all the shapes and drawing um, drawing the shape, the design on the background and all the other stuff that you do for it. But um, I'm using the, oh, excuse me, I'm using the back basting technique for this project because the, I mean, I could, I could cut out the templates and draw on them and then try and work them out onto the background block. But this, for me, this is just the, the most, the eas easiest and straightforward way to create this quilt. So um, I, I'm gonna do that, essentially. Um, I'm just, sorry, excuse me. I'm trying to see if um, I can find the, I think I had, for those of you that might not have seen the quilt that I'm working on, I, I've got a, a small printout of it. So it gives you an idea of, of the final thing that I'm gonna be making. Um, so bear with me one moment again. <laughs> so I've just noticed I've uh, got a recipe that I've written on the back here and I have no idea what the recipe's for. Looks like some sort of cake. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is, this is the quilt. I'm not sure. Um, oh, there we go. And these are the two blocks that I've done so far. So I decided in my little series that I'm doing, I've decided to work my way along the top row and then just kind of keep working my way through the hot, all the rows. But I mean, just look how gorgeous this is. It's just absolutely stunning. And I'm so excited um, to have my own version of this quilt. So yeah, so ne the next block I'll be working on is that one. And... I'll be doing um, a part three or four of this series for this channel so you'll see me working on on that sunflower block next and I'm going to be excited I'm excited to choose the fabrics for that one um, and you can I, I'll leave a link to my the first video of this series and then if you want to watch the other ones that I've done in the series then then you can and I'm going to be doing a um, a bit of a bake and sew thing video with this I had the idea of looking up traditional recipes from the mid 1800s which is when this quilt was made and filming me making the recipes and then stitching and um, just kind of immersing myself in what it would have been like to be stitching this quilt in those times um, it sounds a bit funny but not funny but it might sound a bit silly but I just thought it'd be quite fun um, and I get to make lovely cakes with it as well so yeah, so like I said, I'll leave the link um, in whatever top corner that you need to leave the link in. And yeah, looking forward to that one. So that's all my hand applique stuff that I've been working on. And the last thing I will be showing you in this little sit down chat is my 
my knitted my knitted start quilt style project. <laughs> Um, I, I, in my last video I showed you a uh, knitting project that I wanted to start with some beautiful indie dyed yarns that I'd bought and I realised when I was watching when I was watching the video back to make sure I, I just to check if I needed to edit, edit anything or add anything I kept talking about the yarn as if it was fabric so I do apologise if you're a knitter you probably thought gosh she just doesn't know what she's talking about um, but yeah I'm, I'm so in, in the habit of talking about fabric and colours and things like that so my brain is focused, my brain is trained to talk about fabric rather than yarn and so yeah I'll, I'll, um, I'll try and be better at that but uh, yeah so I've done, am I missing, I feel like I'm missing a square okay it's gone somewhere anyway um, I've done one of the blocks so the blocks of the knitting pattern so it's 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 made up of four squares and they're half triangles so it's based on the idea of a half square triangle quilt but knitted so I've done one block and I've actually just safety pinned it together because I need to I need to block block the blocks <laughs> um, which I'll do I'll do once I've done all of them but I just thought I'd safety pin them together to give you an idea of what it will look like finished so this is the first block that I've done and I used this really pretty rusty orange colour um, yarn from the Fibre Fox. If you look in my last video, I've left uh, my last sit down chat, I left some links to the comp uh, to the businesses that I bought these fab um, fabrics, I was going to say fabrics, the yarns from and um, yeah so this is the really pretty maple, I think it's maple colour from the Fibre Fox and then this was um, from Bird, Bird, Bird Street Yarns and I think it works really nicely actually. Um, it's uh, It's been such a lovely project to work on so far. Um, so my camera's cut me off again and I've realised that I think I can only record half an hour um, at a time it doesn't let me record any longer than that so I'm gonna have to make sure that every time I do this I'm not in mid flow of talking when it will cut me off um, yeah so what I was saying was um, it's a really it's been such a lovely uh, project to work on and the the squares come together so quickly um, and the pattern is written really well and like I said before I'm I would say I'm a confident beginner and it um, I, I once you kind of get into the rhythm of what you need to do it's quite a mindless uh, project to work on so it's been really nice to just fit in little bit little, little squares every now and then between um, tasks or you know when I'm making dinner or something and I've just started making the second block with two different yarns so I'm using uh, hopefully it comes up well on here and I'm hoping yeah I wasn't sure whether these contrasted well enough but I think they do so again, these are both yarns from Bird Street Yarns, and this one is it's so pretty. It's got lots of different shades of pinks and purples and a little bit of hot pink and yellow and a bit of has it got orange? No. But it just picks up the pink. The pink picks up the the pink, the pink, um, what am I trying to say? the pink on this side picks up the flecks of pink on this side and it just really pretty kind of reminds me of a really um of a uh, fruit salad sweet i don't know if you if you're not english you might not know what fruit salad sweets are but they're these little rectangle sweets that are half pink and half yellow or orange Oh, they're really lovely. They used to come in a mixed bag with um, blackjacks, which are a lic again a chewy licorice sweet. Actually, blackjacks are my favourite out of the two options. But yeah, it just reminds me of a, a fruit salad sweet. But, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this one turns out as a whole block. I was a bit worried that I'm not sure whether the contrast in this um, doesn't really go with the contrast in this, but. I don't know I, I don't know whether I'd, I probably just need to make more blocks and then as a whole piece it will probably look really nice together because I've got these are quite subtle colours compared to that maple the sort of dark orangey colour and I think and I've got two darker purples 
as part of the minis that I got from from this set. Um, yeah, I think uh, it, it, I'm sure it'd be it'll look all lovely when it's all done in one go, and then I I can change blocks around or. I might even I, I might see how it goes and then even if I don't want to do the blocks like this I could just do use all the these smaller blocks as and just put them all in random order so it's a bit more of a mix and match type thing but we'll see as I'm making making the quilt. So I had to stop I had to um cut out this bit because my husband just bought me a cup of tea so <laughs> bless him he was trying to come in as quietly as possible. Um but yeah so that's, I think I'll stop waffling about my knitted quilty blanket and I, I, I'm i kind of tempted to start a second knitting project and do um, a garment of some sort but um, I think I'm going to have to resist the urge and just focus on this one knitted project and then the more I focus on this project and do it then the quicker I get done and then I can start on something new but but yeah, I'm just going to enjoy the slow pace of working on this and then work on something else next. But I think I've already got lined up what I want to do next, knitting-wise. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's quite, it's come to, like I said, it's come together quite quickly and I don't think it's going to be very long to do this whole quilt. Um, so yeah, it's quite, it's really squishy, squishy, squishy when you're all together. Anyway. <laughs> Um, so that's that's everything I think uh, of all the projects that I wanted to talk about. Um, the final thing I wanted to mention is that I have been thinking about um, I'm planning on doing Vlogmas this year. I've never done it before. Um, I'm a bit nervous about doing it, but I I really enjoy watching other people's Vlogmas videos and I just thought it'd be quite a fun thing to do and try and make it sort of hand applique quilty hand stitching -y type thing <laughs> um I don't really know um I guess I I probably need to be at research I, I guess it's a 20 you do it for 24 days up until Christmas Eve um which seems quite nice so I've written out a couple of ideas of things I want to make for the particular series and and ideas of um, sharing some Christmassy things um, so it should be quite fun hopefully um, but if there's anything you would like to see me do throughout that uh, period Christmassy wise or hand applique wise or anything um, let me know in the comments it'd be great to get some fun ideas or um, ideas of things that you'd like to see me do um, but yeah that's I think that's it for today's sit down chat um, I hope you enjoyed watching this and I, I'm not sure, I sometimes wonder whether this is interesting what I do but um, I love talking about hand applique and all the crafty projects I'm working on and I hope you enjoy listening to it um, and I will catch up with you next week for another, another little sit down chat and it will probably be the last sit down chat before I do Vlogmas because I think it's the 1st of December on Thursday maybe. Um, so yeah, I might do, I might squeeze in another little sit down chat and a bit more of an update of my projects I'm working on. But um, for the time being, I hope you have a lovely rest of your day, morning, afternoon, evening, weekend, whenever you're watching this and I will catch you next time. Please, um, if you like watching me ramble on about projects and talk about hand applique and quilting, it would really mean a lot if you liked this video and subscribed to my channel. And please let me know what projects you're working on. I love to hear about uh, your projects and what you're working on them for or if you're working on them for someone special. Um, it'd be really great to know. But in the meantime, I will do a little bit of uh, stitching now and edit this video and I will see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.